Hello guys and welcome to Hazel Lucia Tarot. I'm Hazel Lucia. You can also call me Stephanie. And today I have a reading for you called What is Your Power? I'm going to be looking at anything and everything that gives you command and control of a room or what makes people pay attention to you, what allows them to uh, give you their trust and confidence in what it is you present or do. This could be the vibes you give off, these could be the talents or skills, or any abilities you possess that really allow you to uh, take control of a situation, take control of a room, command, what allows your presence to be known. Um, this is a little bit also of a gas up reading, so if you've been feeling low in confidence lately, this could be a reading that you've been needing to hear. So we've got four piles today. Um, we got the first pile with, um, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Chariorite. The second pile is going to have a black tourmaline. Third pile has Citri. And the fourth pile has this very blue, pretty lapis lazuli. So take your time, take a few deep breaths, maybe meditate on which pile is yours, and I'll see you on the other side. Hello, pile one. If you chose the Chariorite with the Sun Moon Tarot, this is your reading. We're going to be doing a vibe check first with some Oracle cards. So before we do the Tarot, this is going to be to check to see if this is you. So if you resonate with what the cards give you, then this is your pile. If not, there are three other piles to choose from. So let's start with Dragonfly Magic. Elder, move beyond ancestral patterns. Protection Guardian, drop your shields. Coagulation, Vesta, Home, and Leo, Shine. So Dragonfly Magic, I embrace my transformation. I courageously let go of the past. The magic of nature is in me. I am brilliant and I am blessed. Elder, move beyond ancestral patterns. Protection Guardian, drop your shields. Coagulation. Vesta, home. Your household situation is improving, either through a move or a healthy change in occupants. Leo, shine. So I get the feeling that this is a person who is in a situation where they always have to have their guard up. Maybe you live or work with uh, individuals who may not be respecting your boundaries, who may be unhealthy for you, or who may be preventing you from transforming and evolving as a person with coagulation here. Um, even all the characters and creatures in these cards, except the dragonfly, they all seem to have their guard up. Um, the protection guardian in general makes me think that you're always having to be looking out for your back. We're always having to be um, in survival mode. And this may be something that you've inherited. You may be living at home with family members who just do not respect your boundaries, who do not respect your energy, or who may just be draining you. Um, and you need to transform, you need to let go of something that is uh, holding you back. I'm getting that, especially with the dragonfly. You want to embrace this transformation and let go of the past. Um, and even Leo, Leo does not like to be uh, repressed, suppressed. They're very much someone who needs to shine. And I think you're also feeling this. Um, 
yes, this feels like you're stuck in a very stagnant situation. So it's no wonder why you chose this reading. You really do want to see what your power is or what it is that makes you thrive, what it is that'll get you out of the situation. And the thing is, you're very protected by your ancestors. You're very protected by... You might have a lot of guardian angels, if you believe in that, or spirit guides. Um, you have a lot of protection, and there's a lot of family or karmic patterns that need to be undone. I'm getting that especially with the elder. Move beyond ancestral patterns. The good news is, is that things will be improving because you have no option. Things have to improve. Um, I don't know if you are familiar with the goddess Vesta. She's the goddess of the hearth and the home. If you do have a space in this home that you share, whether it's your own room or maybe just like, I don't know, a little reading nook or something, maybe even a garden outside, whatever it is, make that your safe space and use that area for a meditation I'm hearing. Use it as a way, as your place to manifest as your place to find peace maybe let people know hey when i'm in this area leave me alone because i need my me time um, because you need some piece of some sense of peace within your current living situation you may also just need to put your boundaries up more and maybe vocalizing this is uh you're going to be vocalizing this that's for sure um, right now, I'm recording this during cancer season, so we're coming up on Leo season. And you may find yourself being more vocal about your boundaries, your needs, and what it is that you want out of your current living situation if you can't change it right away. There's going to be a shift in your energy and people will not be able to ignore that. And it doesn't have to be a conflict. It doesn't have to be a bad thing. Um, they could just suddenly realize, yes, we haven't been respecting your wishes. We haven't been giving you your space. So if this sounds like you, and this is your reading pile one. Let's get on with the two. So I'm going to be using, this is the Sun and Moon Tarot. I'm also going to be using the DC Tarot deck. Um, just because this is about power and I thought it's cute to use superheroes. So we got the King of Wands. I love that. The Magician. The Three of Wands. The Hierophant. The Hermit. Prince of Swords, let me just make sure this is all in frame, and the Princess of Cups. Uh, I think you got an extra one because I guess you need a bit more guidance, that's okay. And then to clarify these cards, I'm actually going to live shuffle this because I forgot to pre-shuffle it. To clarify the King of Wands, we got the Ten of Pentacles. To clarify the Magician, we got the Knight of Cups. To clarify the Three of Wands, we've got... Three of Wands, okay. <laughs> To clarify the hair event, we've got the Empress. To clarify the Hermit, the Magician. You got the Magician twice here. You're really coming into your power. To clarify the Prince of Swords, the High Priestess. And to clarify the Princess of Cups, the hair event. Again. Okay, so there's a lot of... Uh, You've got a lot of major arcana cards so you're coming to a big powerful shift anytime you have more than like three of them 
just know something big's coming your way or you're going to be recognizing something big in your power in your personal power um you may be getting into spirituality or meditation or you've been or maybe you're just remembering what your power is um so let's start off with the king of wands this is probably the most commanding and powerful of all the physically powerful of the suits so the fact that you have the king of wands with the ten of pentacles i'm hearing you're probably going to come into a at work a position of power so you may be coming into more money or you may be finding a way to advance your uh economic status which is good because maybe this will be the reason you get out of your current situation we have the magician and the magician is able to manifest and create whatever they want um the fact that you have it twice in this reading really lets me know that you're kind of done being in the situation you're in and whether you want to or not you're going to be advancing um spiritually emotionally mentally and physically we have the three of wands and usually when i get the three of wands i get the sense of you're waiting for something here you're no longer waiting here you're planning you're about to make moves and the fact that you have it twice so you're amplifying this you may not be able to even hide this but it doesn't seem like you want to you're fine with that you're kind of letting people know hey I am no longer what I used to be. I am coming to my power. Maybe you're really set on moving out or advancing in your life. Maybe you've been stuck there for a while. Um, or maybe you've believed that in the past you couldn't do any of this. With the Hierophant, the Hierophant, at least the way I interpret it, is uh, learning. You're learning um, whatever it is that you need to learn. For me, it's usually learning things from your ancestors, learning things from spirit, or learning from a mentor. You're learning what it takes to live in this power, to live in this vibration of finally taking control of your life. And with the Empress, uh, I get a feeling you're learning to nurture yourself. Maybe you're also learning how to find power in your feminine energy. Because I know the feminine energy tends to come off as passive. But I've learned it's quite the opposite. When you allow yourself to receive, you get a lot more control of your life because you're receiving the things you need. Whether that's money, love, support, um, confidence. You may literally be stepping into your feminine. Maybe you're dressing better. Maybe you're doing your hair, makeup um, better. Maybe you're just nurturing yourself, feeding yourself better food. And even small steps like that can make a big impact on your overall life situation, on your overall way of being. Sorry, let me go back to the magician because I forgot to bring up this Knight of Cups. So the Knight of Cups is somebody who is, in this reading, I'm seeing as someone who has charm. Um, somebody who is very well liked and very well loved. Um, you're seen as charming, charismatic, and just somebody that people like to be around. So maybe you're gaining favor with certain people that are allowing you to advance your state. Um, it could also be a partner that helps, maybe they're able to help you or get you out of something. Um, but I don't see it as interfering at all. This Knight of Cups makes me think of somebody very vocal because you have Black Canary here and she's uh, her power is screeching really loud. Maybe, maybe somebody has heard your call for help. You may be asking somebody for help, but they won't see it as a burden and maybe you have to stop seeing yourself as a burden too. Um, but they're seeing it as, oh, well, we like you. Of course we want to help you out. Um, and this goes back to the Empress because, again, you're receiving the help, guidance, support you need, whether that's emotional or 
monetary. The hermit here, I feel like is what you're currently feeling. Like you can't really express yourself. Like you've shut yourself off from either a lot of people or maybe just the outside world. If not physically, literally, then at least emotionally and mentally, you've you've checked out. And I don't blame you. If you can hear that, that's my coffee maker. But maybe that is also confirmation that this is exactly what has been happening. Maybe the alarms are going off and saying, hey, I need to get out of hermit mode. And magician is coming here. Because you've been in this hermit mode, you're able to find your power. You've been listening to that very quiet inner voice that is telling you, hey, we need to get out of this. And you have everything you need to do so. Again, you've got this twice. The magician has everything they need to achieve what they want. Um... Going on to the Prince of Swords, um, you're going to be ready to communicate your needs. You're going to, and I don't want to say the, the Knight of Swords, Prince of Swords, is the fastest of the suits, but it's definitely quick communication. It's definitely quick movement. With the High Priestess here, you're receiving energetic downloads and intuition guidance a lot more quickly than usual or at the very least you'll be getting the help you need a lot faster even if you don't meditate or if you don't um if you're not overly spiritual which i would be surprised if you are because you have a tarot reading um but even if you're not into all of that um your inner guidance is allowing you do it is bringing this to you you also have the hierophant twice so we're really digging into family um undoing family trauma or family karma i don't like saying trauma because it's not always trauma sometimes it's just patterns that you get from your family because it's been passed down for so long that you don't know how to stop and it doesn't necessarily have to be something awful either it could just be like maybe your family all has a habit of yelling and you really would like to stop being someone who yells right away at any minor inconvenience so you're learning to be more soft-spoken or how to communicate more effectively so that nobody's feelings get hurt or nobody overreacts it could also be learning how to respect people's boundaries because maybe your boundaries are being disrespected because that's just how you were raised or taught and so you want to both respect other people's boundaries and have yours respected um these are just examples this, this isn't necessarily what is going on it could be any number of familial patterns that have been ingrained in you or that you were raised with and i say family because we have the princess or page of cups this makes me think of a child um specifically your literal childhood how you were raised how you were brought up um but also the child within you that wants to learn, that wants to learn how to be a person, you know, a grown-up. So, yeah, you're very much nurtured. It doesn't feel like you've paid much attention to your emotions, maybe because you've had to. There's only two suits of cups here. Well, then again, there's also one of swords. Never mind. I don't know where I was going with that. But you haven't been paying much, or maybe you have been paying attention to your emotions, but you definitely haven't been vocalizing it or being able to see it in from a rational standpoint of, okay, why am I feeling this way? Why am I being this way? But there are a lot of powerful cards. There's more arcana cards in this reading and there are suits so you're going through some major changes major upheaval in your life not in a bad way more in like you're going to evolve and transform drastically because you have no choice so yeah that is all i have for the tarot um I'm also seeing that 
you're going to be, people are going to notice this. They're going to be looking at you and notice that you've changed. And they're going, they won't be able to ignore it. I don't know why I'm getting that a lot, but all of these cards have characters that you just can't ignore. We also have a lot of uh, magic, mystic -y type of the DC tarot, which is funny because usually you associate comic book characters with like physical strength and physical power, but you got Zatanna Zatara, you got Raven, you got, um, I forgot his name and poison ivy but they're not really known for their physical strength they're kind of known for their otherworldly powers and i and i guess that fits because this is a tarot reading but yeah your change isn't going to be so much physical as it's going to be internal and emotional maybe even spiritual um And this is great news. You're definitely going to be coming into some money. Enough to definitely get you out of your current situation. You're going to learn how to con not control your emotions, but how to manage uh, the past family history or undo any family trauma that you've had. Um, now we're going to look at any other guidance you need for going forward with your path, pile one. So for your guidance, I've got Temple of the Rose, Ancient Power, Expression, Activation, Scarlet Codes. And for your ritual cards, we've got First Quarter, Focus, Momentum, Motivation. Fire. A lot of fire in this reading. Courage release, masculine energy, and obsidian snowflake. Shadow, integration, introspection. So yeah, this echoes what we've been reading in the past few piles. I mean, the past few cards. There's a lot of fire in this uh, reading, which is funny because it doesn't, it's not very much a physical energy reading it's more you're unleashing your expression your creative expression you're stepping out in the world and making yourself known first quarter this is the phase right after um what's it called new moon so you're gaining momentum you're coming out of that new moon introspective shadow work type situation and moving on to making plans, making moves. You're, there's forward momentum in this reading, very powerful. Um, the Temple of the Rose, Ancient Power, this again is bringing back any ancestral, any family baggage that is holding you back. Um, you may need some obsidian snowflake, or sorry, snowflake obsidian or any kind of protective crystal if you're a person who carries crystals. Um, but this is also calling back to you being protected and guided by your ancestors. So when I'm talking about ancestors, I'm, I realize that I'm saying family trauma, but also ancestors. When your family passes um, into the afterlife, not all of them, but a huge majority of them, they leave behind all the negativity that was with them in the living life. Um, and they learn. It's almost like you instantly become an ascended master when you pass. So they leave behind all the baggage. They leave behind all the guilt, the shame, the... And all they become is like pure love and pure light. I'm a bit of a medium, so whenever I feel people pass on... And maybe you have felt somebody in your family pass on a close loved one. Um they don't see the negativity. What they do is they guide you to get you out of that negativity. It's they If they were a perpetuator of this negativity, of these bad habits, then they see the error of their ways and they feel like it is their job to guide you out of it. 
it's like I'm aware that I either created or instilled this within the family. And it's almost like they become an instant guide for you to get you out of that. So just know you have a lot of support in the afterlife with your ancestors, with your past loved ones. They want you to thrive. They don't want you to live in the energy that they had. I'm going to read a little bit about Temple of the Rose because I'm not very familiar with that card. This is from the the Rose Oracle by Rebecca Campbell, by the way. It's a very pretty deck. Every time we call back our power, we heal the sacred thread of the feminine. So this may have been like the feminine, like the women in your family or the the feminine energies in your family that you're undoing. But anyway, every time we call back our power, we heal the sacred thread of the feminine. Every time we come together in circle, we heal the sacred thread of the feminine. Every time we honor our cyclic nature and the cycles of nature, we heal the sacred thread of the feminine. Regardless of which gender you identify with, if any, this is a card of calling back your power. How appropriate, because this is a what is your power reading? It's a card of expressing your truth, no matter what it is. It's a card of sharing your soul's voice and singing the song that you came here to sing. This is a card of activation. It's a call to action. It's a remembrance. You're a child of the ancient goddess. So yeah, it's a card about breaking free of any past uh, negative feminine energies that may be within your family or even friends. I keep saying family, but it could also be your group of friends. Like maybe you have some feminine friends, female identifying friends who don't have the best energy and rather than just breaking it off with them, you're setting boundaries or you're learning to heal that. Maybe with them, maybe watching them heal as you heal your own. Because when you heal yourself, you impact everybody else around you. You impact those closest to you. People like to see you thrive whether they admit it or not. And if they don't, they don't belong in your life. So put yourself first. Heal. Stay in this momentum. Or at least begin it. Do something small to get you out of this situation that you no longer need to be in you're very protected and you will be successful regardless and that's all i have for you today pile one thank you for joining me in this reading thank you for letting me read for you and i hope nothing but love and light and the best for you bye Hello there, pile two. If you chose the pile with the black tourmaline, then this is your reading. I'm going to start off with a vibe check to see whether this resonates with you. This is going to be your energy, what situation you're currently in or what you're feeling. So if this resonates with you, then we can proceed with this reading. If not, there are three other piles to choose from. So we're going to start off with... Dolphin, play. Swim in the happy joy of living. Inhale confidence and exhale fear. Dive into your wisdom. Go with the flow. I like how this, that matches the, the um, deck. We also have Earth Guardian. Stay rooted and grounded. Autumn. Oh, I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Ain, I'm leap of faith. Take a risk and put your heart's true desire into action. And conjunction, alliance. I love how conjunction and autumn are uh, the same color palette. And really, before I started this pile, I have a feeling that you may be a very creative soul. You might 
love to um, work with colors, so like an artist, um, a painter, maybe you like to draw and play makes me think of that as well. Water in general makes me think of that as well. So you're a very kind, very gentle soul is what I'm feeling. You're probably very spiritual. And at least you give off the vibe of being someone very gentle, very calm, very nice. You don't give off like an aggressive energy or anything. If anything, you have a very... Well, let me say some other word besides calm. A very... Friendly energy. So this may be your power. The power of being calm and gentle and nice. And a lot of people may not be seeing that as a power because, you know, it's very passive. It's very um, yin, dominant, very feminine. Not that you're... Not to say that you identify as feminine, but very much passive, very much you allow things to come to you. With conjunction, I get the feeling that you have a lot of friends, or at the very least, you're seen as very favorable, very popular. Same thing with the dolphins, because I just think of people that like to get together. Maybe you have a lot of uh, friends, maybe you like to have get-togethers, maybe you like to host parties or hang out with groups of people. And because of this, you may have trouble staying grounded sometimes. You're surrounded by so many energies, but they're good energies. They're energies you enjoy being around. But sometimes you get lost in what is them and what is you. So the, your guardian is uh, reminding you to stay grounded and rooted. And I'm getting that the same thing with autumn. Autumn, I think, is one of the more grounding seasons if you will because you tend to remember that nothing lasts forever and that things change and you also see of course a tree with the roots the rooted roots <laughs> so and i feel like this card with the geese also reminds me of like i can't remember they fly uh, what the migration pattern is but they fly somewhere for winter or autumn or i'm pretty sure that's why it has that color so and with Ayn here, you may have trouble following your heart because you think of the collective before you think of yourself. You probably think of your friends, your loved ones, what they would think or what they want before, you know, making any decision for yourself. So that might be why you're here at this reading today. You want to see what your power is so that you can take, so you can better express it and that's not to say you want to leave any of these people behind you seem to really love your community and your friends your circle your group but you also kind of want to plant your own roots do your own thing find a little bit of yourself among these people so if this sounds like you then you can proceed pile two Yeah, it's a very gentle energy. I would probably try to be your friend if I knew you. So we're going to start off with the tarot you chose, and then I'm going to use the DC tarot um, to see what your powers are, which I thought was cute because, you know, comic books, power. So to start off, we have the Four of Wands. With these cute little bunnies. The Five of Wands. The Five of Swords. Strength, the Knight of Wands, Queen of Wands. Let me make sure these are all in the frame. Because you've got a few more cards than some of the other decks. Seven of Wands, and Six of Swords. To clarify the, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, the Lion Strider Tarot, we're going to use the DC Tarot.
Clarifying the Four of Wands, we got Eight of Wands. To clarify the Five of Wands, we've got Six of Swords. And you got that twice, actually. Yeah, you got that twice. To clarify the Five of Swords, we have the Page of Swords. Lots of swords, so lots of internal, mental struggle here. To clarify strength, we have the Magician. To clarify the Knight of Wands, got the Nine of Swords. To clarify the Queen of Wands, Queen of Swords. I'm running out of space. To clarify the Seven of Wands, the Moon. And to clarify the Six of Swords, the Knight of Wands, which you've got twice. Okay, so there's been a situation or a falling out, whether it's with other people or just within yourself. I'm not sure yet. We'll have to look at it, but there's a lot going on here. So starting with the Four of Wands, uh, the Four of Wands is usually a happy card. It's usually a card of celebration, a card of partying, I guess? A good card. Yeah, celebrating something. But with the Eight of Wands, it feels like that was very fleeting. Like, it did not last that long. The Five of Wands is conflict. The Six of Swords you've had to leave. You've had to step away from this. Maybe physically, maybe just mentally, but you've definitely had to step away. With the Five of Swords, it feels like something was lost. Maybe you've learned something. Maybe there's been a disagreement. There's been a... Uh, a conflict of interest, I get with the Page of Swords. You've learned some information that just does not resonate with you or does not agree with your future plans. Because I do get a feeling this is about the future. I do get a feeling that this is about moving forward, maybe with your group of friends, maybe with just one loved one. With the Strength card, though, you definitely want to call back your power. And you will. Anytime the Magician appears to clarify, it amplifies another Arcana card. Um, you know you have what it takes to move forward. You know you have the skills. And if you don't, then you definitely will figure this out. You will definitely find out soon, basically. With the Knight of Wands, so the Knight of Wands, you have this twice in your reading. This is someone who moves forward, regardless of the situation. They move forward because they have courage, at the very least in their heart. With the Nine of Swords, you've had to move on despite the fears that you have, the anxieties you may have. Maybe you found out something and you're going to have to progress forward without that something that you may have lost or found out that you no longer have. It could be the support of your people. It could be it could be a loved one. It could be a friend. You're very brave. And this is, yes, this is uh, clarified. This is clarified by the Queen of Wands. You're very brave, and it seems like you're carrying a lot despite having all these inner conflicts going on. And then being clarified by the Queen of Swords, you have a lot more power than you give yourself credit for. You're very logical. You're, you very much see through the crap, if there was any crap involved. 
but you know how to move on. You may have had a betrayal of a friend or a loved one, but you're moving on with dignity. You're moving on despite the the betrayal because it feels like there's a heaviness inside you there's a heartbreak basically there's not a three of swords here but i also feel like the nine of swords is that times three <laughs> simple math um you may be good at math as well so you may be artistic and mathematically gifted which is you know good all around coming down here to the seven of wands again there's conflict, but I feel like this is inner conflict because whatever this was had to deal with somebody else, a third party, or maybe two people. And then as you progress forward, you realize that you're having to do some of this glow and that you're having to collect yourself up and move forward because you have no choice. Anytime the magician is there, it's like we're going through with this. Same thing with strength. So, and I say it's inner because we have the moon here who, for me at least, is uh, your intuition, your inner, your feelings, your inner self, maybe even your shadow self. So you may have the struggle within you, but you'll be, I don't want to say getting over it, but you'll be moving on. You'll move on from this and you'll come out a better, brighter person. You'll move on because you have a lot more power and you have a lot more strength than you give yourself credit for you may feel like you may not be able to do this without these people or this situation that you've lost or have left behind because of a because of a conflict because of a struggle and as we saw in your vibe check it seems like you were very much somebody who loves to be with their people and then you come into some conflict maybe you realize that the people you're with do not want the same things as you so you're going to have to carry on alone but i don't see this as a bad thing i do see this as you removing yourself out of emotions there are no cup cards here in fact the only emotional card we have is the moon and you may not be, you may be taking your emotions out of this. You may be having to see this through um, a very rational, a very, you're seeing this very logically and rationally. You're not taking any of it um, personally. But that doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. That doesn't mean you're not disappointed. Yes, you're very powerful, and I don't know, maybe these people were having you believe that you weren't. Maybe you were in a situation where people didn't believe you had this kind of power to move on, or that you had the strength and courage to do what it is you always set out to do. But you know what? That's fine. You have to do you. You have to get yourself in a better place. And move forward with life because you have dreams too. You want to do certain things as well. And maybe they'll come back around. Maybe they won't. But you don't lose anything here when you're saving yourself. You don't lose anything when you recognize your power and your strength. Because you have the capability to do it. You're a very smart individual. It may be that you've always had more going for you than some of the people that have been holding you back and they've recognized that and because they recognized that they didn't want to they got angry that you recognized your power that you recognized your talents and strengths but you don't want people like that you the people who love you will support you regardless they will not feel jealousy or at least not to the point where you know it's damaging to your relationship they will not feel less than 
people who love you, they want to see you grow. They want to see you better yourself. And you may get, you may develop friends who see this in you. But unfortunately, that means you have to leave behind the people who don't want better for you. And maybe they'll come around. I don't see this move as permanent. It may just be something small. And maybe they'll get over it and they'll be able to finally see or even admit I was just jealous. I was just not in a good place. I realized that I did not work on myself when you clearly did work on yourself. But for now, you will move on and you move on with the with strength, with courage, with your crown held high. So let's move on to your guidance. And it's okay to be emotional. It's okay to feel things. Not having emotions isn't going to make anything better. Or maybe you were just brought up this way or maybe you don't like to feel that's also understandable so for your guidance we have the bud potential promise it's about to happen keep going we have third eye enlightenment vision mindfulness and air yeah a lot of air you may be an air sign or have a lot of air uh, big air placements in your chart um, so with the bud yeah there's something you've come into or that you're going to come into that's going to be great for you you're very much branching out and becoming your own individual person maybe it's through a job maybe it's through an opportunity maybe you've gotten a scholarship patronage something that is allowing you to grow and develop these uh talents that you have and you should be very proud um the only thing that's weighing you down is what your friends, family, close loved ones are going to think of you. And it may not be great, but you're going to have to move on because you're meant for greatness. With the third eye, you have a good sense of intuition. You probably always have and you just don't even think about it. You kind of just know what to do, what to say. And it comes naturally to you. With air, you have an imagination. You have, yeah, sorry. You have imagination, aspiration, and movement. Yeah, there's a lot of movement here. Even when I was reading the tarot, it didn't feel like you wanted to be stuck in that energy of whatever went on. You know you have to progress. And you do so with a lot of guidance. You follow your intuition very um very intuitive you follow your intuition intuitively you follow your intuition without thinking without questioning it it's probably why some people are kind of annoyed that you're not going to be in their life as prominently as you used to be but you can't stay a bud you got to blossom into a rose i'm also hearing you might need a bit of protection even if you don't normally do this you probably have never had to because you know you're already protected because you chose the black tourmaline protection and grounding and the way you protect is just by shining your light so brightly that you cannot let anything ne negative in and if for some reason you do you know it'll leave as quickly as it came in also a lot of grounding because you don't have others around you to help you ground you may have to do the grounding yourself so a lot of meditation, a lot of being with yourself and finding out what it is that keeps you rooted in reality. Because it seems like whatever you're doing is going to be very creative. It's going to be very, um, very mental, very emotional. So you may not be in the 3D as much. So I would focus on grounding. And that is all I have for you today, Pile 2. I wish you a lot of love and a lot of luck in your future endeavors because the future is very bright. I also wish you a lot of love because I know you've gone through things, but I promise you it'll get better. Take care.
Hello there, pile three. So if you chose the citrine with the tarot of the divine, then this is going to be your reading. Um, I have to say before I even started, like, you must have a lot of energy or a lot of, like, very... I don't know, you move around a lot because all my cards started like shuffling everywhere and going all over the place and I was like, okay, well, this is new. Um, so I already get that from your energy, but this is going to be the vibe check. Um, we're going to see um, what it is, what your situation is, what it is you're going through, how you are as a person. Um, and if this resonates with you, this is your reading. If not, we have three other readings that can definitely suit you. So we're going to start with, see? um penguin authentic reach out to your tribe in times of need family gives you strength when you face the storm love your uni love your un uniqueness you are full of surprises break free from others expectations and just be yourself hermit retreat and recharge virgin's milk I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Sige or Sige? See? Quiet time. Take some quiet time alone to rest, meditate, and contemplate. And Juno, partnership. Okay, I'm getting very giggly. You might have kind of a ridiculous sense of humor. Um, or you might just be funny. I'm also noticing a lot of blue, so maybe you have a very active throat chakra. Um, also a lot of birds, specifically birds that have to do with uh, family and partnership. So you might have um, partnerships on the mind, you might have family on the brain, you might come from a big family. Which is interesting because I'm also getting quiet time and hermit. So. Maybe you're having to balance these two things out, being with family and then being alone. Um, virgin's milk makes me... You may have just had a baby because there is a baby penguin here. And maybe you're breastfeeding. I don't know why that was the first thing to come to mind. But that's not actually what this, this, is, what this card is about. Um, virgin's milk is somebody who is... Uh, who knows a lot and has a lot of talent for somebody who just begun an amateur. Um, I'm going to get the book and read up on this. Yeah, let me get the book and read up on this before I say something else. But, yes, you're big into family. You have... A very strong sacral chakra. And you have a lot of energy. You may have to have a lot of energy if you have as big of a family as I'm thinking that you have. You might also find it hard to get some quiet time. To have some you time. And having to balance these two things out. This is probably why you're at this reading. You want... What you think you want is power. What you really need is grounding. So, virgin smoke from the Wild Unknown Alchemy Oracle deck. Innocence, naivete, purity. You may be a new mom, or maybe you're just a really young mom, and you're having to balance all this thing out. Or not just mom, but like a parent, a father as well. The lack of virginity archetype can be seen in child prodigies and those expected to grow up too quickly. It is remedied by admitting exactly where you are at. Humor and humility help. So yeah, something tells me you're a very happy-go-lucky new parent. You may be a young parent. Um, you may be new to having a family. Maybe you had kids a little bit younger than you wanted to, and that's okay. But you're definitely having to balance out finding yourself versus... Uh, your children's needs. With partnership, I also get the feeling that you married young. And again, that's okay. Um, it seems like your your only concern with this is figuring out how 
you yourself grow up ver along with navigating this family and this partnership. And at times it can feel like it's a lot. And it can be. Um, I feel like, at least for my generation, I am 33, uh, we tend to wait a little bit longer for families, but maybe you didn't. And you didn't want to, or maybe you are okay with having kids that young because it gives you more energy to have them. And it seems like you have an abundance of energy, so it's that's fine. But you also want you time. You also need the time to ground yourself and to figure out what is you versus what is your children versus what is your partner. But something tells me you're going to become really good at this with virgin's milk. This is the child, like it said, it's the child prodigy. Um, so you're going to figure this out very quick. You're going to be a young mom who's got it all together. And people are going to wonder, how do you do it? You're going to be surpassing, you know, people your age who are still struggling with their youth and parenting and trying to become an adult while you're just here understanding that you have to make time for yourself because you're still very much developing while also taking care of your loved ones and it could be through your loved ones that you learn to do all of this you may have children who are also child prodigies maybe your kids kind of raise themselves without you meaning to and that's nothing this isn't to say you're not a good parent or anything or that they've had to raise themselves it's more like they understand in watching you become a successful, well-established, grounded adult, they themselves want to become that instantly and automatically. You inspire them to also become, you know, well-adjusted, good kids. Yes, this is great energy. I feel like, at least in the last two piles, we've had to deal with uh, negative circles and families that to see this it's very refreshing this is great energy and your family is definitely going to appreciate you and value you for this it's a very it's funny you have a very kinetic energy but everything here is very peaceful and quiet maybe this is what you yearn for or maybe this is what you're going to learn to cultivate as you progress on with your life but let's get into the tarot so i'm kind of curious to see what how much more you can come into your power because it seems like you already have it there you're just kind of not used to it or not you don't believe that you can come into it is what i'm hearing like you feel over overwhelmed we're going to start with the tarot of the divine then I'm also going to use the DC Tarot to clarify it. So to start, we have Ace of Cups, Nine of Coins, Queen of Cups, Six of Swords, The Hanged Man, Queen of Coins, Knight of Wands, I feel like the Knight of Wands have shown up in all of my readings so far. And Justice. And to clarify these cards, we have I try not to shuffle on camera because my shuffling is abysmal. It, it's awful. I have small hands, so the cards don't always fit in my hands and they just go all over the place. But with this reading specifically, they've already been going all over. You might feel like you're all over the place. You might feel a bit frazzled. But that's okay. It happens to everybody. Um, with the Ace of Cups, to clarify, we have the Chariot. To clarify, the Nine of Coins. Queen of Wands. Lots of good cards here. It's very positive. To clarify, the Queen of Cups, we have... Six of Cups. To clarify the Six of Swords, we have the High Priestess. To clarify the Hanged Man, we have the King of Pentacles. To clarify the 
clarify the Queen of Coins. We have <laughs> Queen of Pentacles. Okay. They're essentially the same thing, Coins and Pentacles. And next to the King of Pentacles, that's interesting. And to clarify the Knight of Wands, oh, they're not all going to fit. Eight of Pentacles. To clarify justice, the star. All right, so there's a lot of love in your life. There's a lot of... If there isn't, there will be. Also a lot of stability. But also things move very fast. And I have a feeling, especially if you have younger kids, that life goes fast. It's... Oh, what's the saying? The days are long, but the years are short. Something like that. It's something I heard mom say. I'm not a mom, but I know people who are. Um, so I get the feeling that the first few years are going to go by fast. But that's not a bad thing. Um, with the Nine of Coins, you will be coming into stability. Whether that's financial, emotional, or just in your home life. You will have stability because you're going to command it. Um, while I also get a lot of love in this, I also get a lot of no-nonsense. So you're going to go from this, um, this energy of be being frazzled and being exasperated, just unsteady. From this unsteady energy to very stable, possibly very quickly. With the Queen of Cups, you're very much in mama energy. You very much nurture everybody around you. You also have to learn to nurture yourself. Um, with the Six of Cups, especially because this, this is a card of balance. What you give is what you receive. So the more love and care you put into your family, into your close loved ones, the more you will receive. If not now, then definitely in the future. Sorry, I need to have a glass of water because you have a very open and active throat chakra. <laughs> That's for sure. I still see a lot of blue. I mean, this deck is very blue to begin with, but there's a lot of blue in all your cards. With the Six of Swords, so this is a retreat. But you have to do this for your mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being. In fact, this is probably the more the only negative thing I see in your reading is you need to learn to take time for yourself. You need quiet time. You need to go in hermit mode every now and then. I'm kind of surprised this, there's no hermit in this reading because I think the other two did. <laughs> the other two readings did. But I don't think you like to be in hermit mode. You like to rest and recover and relax. But you can't stay shut in forever because you have a big family or a family that needs you. And you like that. You enjoy being you know, mama bear, you enjoy being queen of wands in command, you enjoy having your family, but you also need to remember that you have to take care of yourself in order to take care of them. And I think this comes with, if you give yourself quiet time, the kids will understand what quiet time is. The kids will understand that they need to focus and reflect on themselves as well. This is very much of there's a lot of mirroring in this reading. There's a lot of you put in, you get out what you put into the world in this reading. With the hangman, you may need to learn to let go a little bit because it seems like you do everything. Especially with the king of pentacles here. King of pentacles is very much, any king is very much in control and command. This one, specifically financially, or uh, anything that has to do with health, they're very much in control. You have to let go and let somebody else take care of these things for you. With the Queen of Coins, uh, amplified here, squared, you may be someone who doesn't need to worry about money. You don't need to worry about financial stability. It's going to arrive. It's going to be there. Either because you have a good job or because you married somebody who will take care of you financially. But even then, if even if you did, you 
your partner is okay with letting you handle finances because you're good with them. With the Knight of Wands, I see a lot of energy, like just a lot of energy. You're a very active person. Maybe you have to be because you have so many things going on. Maybe you have a big family or a lot of young ones. Or it could be pets too. You might just have a lot of animals. You may run like an animal shelter or animal rescue or babysit. This could also be, this could also be very much babysitting energy. Like you have the one kid, but you also take care of all the kids on the block. And that may be a way for you to make money. Um, I know babysitting is high in demand because it's just so expensive. Yeah, I get the feeling that whatever keeps you busy is going to bring you in money. With the Eight of Pentacles here, you have the potential to uh, be your own King of Pentacles. Or, yeah. The Justice and the Star. I'm not sure, but I also get... You have very good karma. Whatever you put out, I've said this like a ton of times already, but whatever you put out into the world, you get back. And anytime anyone's done you wrong, um, they get what they have coming to them. And you get your justice seen, especially with the star. The star is a card of hope and of good luck and of good energy. So whatever hardships you may have, know that You will you will get justice regardless of what happens. Yeah, this is a very full life. I don't know if you are a young mom or maybe you may be further along in your mothering, but this is very much a nurturer. Someone who takes care of other people, of other living things, other creatures. But you're well taken care of. Your power is just your life and what you've decided to make out of it. And there may be times when you feel powerless. That's when you should retreat and go take care of yourself. Whether that's through like a spa day, mini vacation, locking yourself up in a room and just doing you, watching TV drinking something good tea I was gonna say wine but I'm like no let's not go there but or maybe in moderation yeah your power is just you being you and I don't know how you do it because this energy is just all over the place in a good way you have a lot of energy I envy that <laughs> all right let's see your guidance so for your guidance we have trust the seasons embrace change cycles of life transition growth kyanite yeah um throat chakra energy connection unity truth new moon openness hope new beginnings and the first rune i've seen in any of these readings gibble generosity partnerships exchange again with the generosity generosity and partnerships i'm pretty sure you either married into wealth or if your partner isn't wealthy they're gonna have a good job they're gonna be able to provide for you financially provide for you and your family financially or you may come into money once you get married or find the right partner like you yourself may be the one earning more but it's going to be fine because whoever you're with is okay with this. And this allows you to receive without guilt or shame. You're not going to have a partner that, you know, resents you for making more than them. This is going to be fine. With new moon, um, there's going to be a shift. And it'll be like your life is finally coming into balance. Everything will take care of itself. New moon is also a moon, for me at least, a moon of rest. New, it's not like the full moon where you have more energy, where you want to do things. The new moon, you're resting, you're recovering. So I think this reading is telling you, you need to learn how to relax and calm down and rest and rejuvenate, reinvigorate. Just, you know, take care of yourself more. 
with kyanite. Kyanite is a crystal for me. It's a uh, crystal of communication. It opens up the throat chakra really well. It opens you up to your truth. Um, it could also help you communicate more effectively with your family and those around you. It could also help you stay connected even when you need to retreat and do your own thing so that you can take care of yourself to better take care of everybody else. Trust the seasons. Um, so as you go through life, I have a feeling that you worry about how things will be, you know, when you're a certain age, will you be able to do this? Will you be able to do that? Or if you have kids, how they will be as they grow up. You just have to trust the process and know that things are going to work out as long as you take care of you. Because when you don't take care of you, you tend to You tend to take it out on everybody else, and nobody wants to. You don't want that to happen. You want to uh, just trust your gut more, trust your intuition more. It feels like you're getting there. Like you very much are in this throat chakra. The next chakra up is your third eye, which is your guidance and your intuition so you just have to learn to let go and trust more let go and love and know that things will be fine even without you being involved in every little thing things will take care of themselves also there's just a lot of abundance like there's money everywhere even the citrine you chose is a crystal of abundance so that is all I have for you today, Pile 3. Thank you for letting me read for you, and take care. Hello, Pile 4. If you chose the Lapis Lazuli in the Shadowscapes Tarot, this is going to be your reading. We're going to do a vibe check to see how your energy is currently, where you're at, what kind of personality you might have, um, and to see if this pile resonates with you. If not, we have three other piles that you can choose. I'm going to tell you right off the bat, you're tired, and I can tell, my beautiful pile four. Um, yours was the first pile where I'm probably going to be sitting for the whole reading, because I, I don't like to sit sometimes. I feel like I channel better if I'm standing, or if I need to say something. But uh, let's see if this is you. If you're tired, you probably already resonate with this. If... <laughs> but for our cards, we have White Stag, Protector. You are an old soul. Your best friend is nature. Use your intuition to take you where you want to go. Awaken to the powerful force within you. You are meant to create blessings with your magic. Yeah, already a lot of third eye and crown chakra. Because that's what Lapis Lazuli uh, reminds me of. Air Guardian, shift your perception. Broken Arrow, embrace the energy of peace. Mars, Aries. Green Tara, start delegating. Ask others, including me, to help you instead of trying to do everything by yourself. Mawu, Mother Earth. You are called upon to help with environmentalism. And Venus, beloved. Okay, wow. So, I'm going to start off with Mars and Venus. You're definitely someone who either has their feminine and masculine energies balanced or you need to or you're getting there or you're learning how to but this is very much at the forefront and you're learning to make peace with that maybe you've gained a new perception on this as well i also get the feeling you're very intuitive or attuned with your higher energy with your crown chakra third eye With the white stag, you're very protected. You know how to protect yourself. You, Like I said, you use your intuition. You may love nature, um, especially with Mawu here, Mother Earth. And you may want to do something for nature. But I get the feeling that sometimes you forget to call upon your inner guidance, your higher power to help you. 
And I have a feeling you're going to need this because your mission in life, or at least one of them, is going to be to help the world. Not just the environment, but also others. Um, with Mars and Venus, I have a feeling you balance your physical energy and your, uh, your charm. I don't know how I would say this. Your love energy. You balance your anger and your love. And you are aware that you need to express them both. Um, you do a lot of work, uh, spiritual work, that's for sure. Um, and I got this because this felt similar to my energy. And I have, and I do a lot of what this says. I'm also reading this very easily. I've had some other readings where I'm like confused of what the cards are trying to tell me. But this I understood right away. So, hello there. Um, I get the feeling that you feel like you don't have any power, but the truth is you do. You just forget for whatever reason. Um, it may be that you become unbalanced sometimes or that you take on other people's energy or that you forget to ask guidance for, yeah, you forget to ask for guidance sometimes. So if this sounds like you, we're going to get on with your reading. You're also very hesitant because I didn't really feel hesitation with any of the other readings before, but right now I'm kind of unsure. And maybe you yourself are unsure right now, and that's okay. This feels very much like the energy I had right before I started recording and doing this where I kind of don't know what I'm doing or I think I don't know what I'm doing but the truth is I'm not letting uh, spirit take over and allow for intuition downloads to come through All right and this is also my old this is my first tarot deck the shadowscapes tarot I got it on a whim it's also my oldest but anyway um I'm gonna start off with this and then I'm going to clarify it with the DC tarot so to start start off i don't read reversals this one came out reverse we have the hermit we have seven of swords ace of swords nine of cups two of swords the hierophant pretty much all my readings have had the hierophant today and the star make sure that's in frame and to clarify we have to clarify the hermit we have ten of cups to clarify the seven of swords we have king of cups to clarify the ace of swords the High Priestess. She's been in all the, my readings. I'm pretty sure she's been in every single reading I've had. The High Priestess. Because everybody clicking on this today is very much in tune with their intuition. Or would like to be. To clarify the Nine of Cups. Two of Wands. To clarify Two of Swords. Ten of Pentacles. To clarify the Hierophant. The sun. And to clarify the star. Um, make sure that's in frame. Ace of Wands. All right. So, yeah, lots of intuition here. Lots of purple. The Shadowscape tends to be a little bit on the purple side, but the fact that, like, all of this is blue and purple, you have... A very strong intuition and I don't think you always listen to it and spirit would very much like you to with the hermit reverse I don't read reversals but if they come out reversed without me meaning them to I take it you're kind of done with this phase you're done being in hermit mode 
or you should at least avoid it. And I know you probably don't want to because you retreat to have to cleanse yourself of the energies you intake. But the thing is, when you allow yourself to be more open and you allow yourself for others to... to when you get more into your extroverted energy, because I know for a fact you're introverted, you will feel a lot more fulfilled emotionally. You might need to make new friends. You might need to reach out and, and accumulate a group of friends. Don't shut yourself off is what I'm hearing because you've done enough of this. And that's not a bad thing. We all need to retreat. My last reading was the opposite. It's like, you need to retreat. Here it's like, okay, don't retreat so much. But the Seven of Swords, you may be distrustful or... You, Things have happened in the past to make you believe that you can't trust anybody. Maybe even specifically uh, people in the people you've been in relationships with. You may have been in relationships where you thought you could trust somebody and then they go and do something that made you lose that trust. Um, you may have just come out of a breakup as well. Maybe this is why you've been in hermit energy. You need to open up your heart again. With the Ace of Swords... You may have been too much in your mental energy. But it's time to come out of this. Because you're filled with a lot of ideas. But you need to see them through. With the High Priestess and the Ace of Swords, you're... Gaining clarity on a lot of your ideas and a lot of your um, projects that you would like to do. And the High Priestess can help you. Like, you can do all the downloads you want. You can do all the meditation and guidance that you want. But you have to set this. You have to set them in motion. With the Nine of Cups, we get emotional fulfillment. When you start doing them, at the very least, start planning it. Start setting a course for making them... For making them reality. With the Two of Swords, again, we get all these blockages. And I'm not exactly sure why. But we have the Ten of Pentacles here. You may not know how to create a living with what you have, with your skills. Because your skill and your power is very much your intuition. You can see through crap. And this is proven by all the swords here. Anytime I see a lot of swords, you have... The gift and a curse sometimes <laughs> to see right through people. And some people may not uh, be very... Some people may not be okay with that. They don't like being seen through. They're like, how dare you? I have this mask up. I have this whole thing going on where I want people to believe the image I present. And here you go seeing through it. And that makes me uneasy because I can't hide that from you. I know this because I'm very much like that as well. I can see through some crap. Not always. I think your blind spot may be your relationship. Your, specifically your romantic relationships. Um, and that's where you become very misguided. Or very distrustful. Because how can you not see through the crap of the person you love the most? But love can blind us sometimes. Or the possibility of love can blind us sometimes. But anyway, back to the Two of Swords. Um, these gifts can bring you money. They can bring you financial stability. Because an ability to see through people is something people would pay a lot of money for. Um, they would like to know whether the people that they're working with, that live with them, that they're hiring, etc. would benefit them in the long run. So I could see companies coming to you for guidance um, if you have any kind of background that can also help with that. I can see people coming to you for, you know, love guidance. It's like, is this person, this, this, and this. You have such a strong intuition, but you don't trust it enough. You may also distrust your intuition in general. It may not just be relationships and people. Because the King of Cups is also very much a very intuitive person. 
you may distrust your own intuition and you got to stop doing that. I think we all do. I think we all do at some point because it's like there's no way that this thing that doesn't have anything to do with this. Because that's how intuition feels sometimes. You look at something and you think of something that's got nothing to do with it and then it turns out it does. You may distrust it. With the Hierophant here, you still feel like you have a lot to learn. And we always do. For me, the Hierophant is a... Uh, guidance from our ancestors guidance from spirit um in the raider weight tarot it's a pope and if we were to translate that to today because i don't think everybody's catholic and no not as many people look to the pope for guidance it would be whoever you consider to be the highest spiritual teacher that would be the hierophant so to me it's just source it's light it's uh spirit um so you may feel like you still need a lot you may still have a lot to learn but with the sun here i feel like you're fine you just need to embrace that light and know that it's within you almost literally because i like how superman actually is radiating in that light um that's funny i never thought i would see superman as a Ascended Master or something. <laughs> I love the DC Tarot. I grew up with comic books. So this is... And I think it's a lot of people's first foray into spirituality. That, comic books, anime, all of that. It's a lot more connected than you would like to think. With the star here, again, you have... You possess great intuition. And it's like... It's not like the moon where it's, you know... You're doing shadow work. You're more in your yin energy. You're more in your feminine energy. With the star, you you trust your intuition. Um, the Ace of Wands is clarifying that you're going to develop this. You're going to be able to trust your intuition more and more without you trying. You just need to step into this light. It's a very beautiful reading. I feel like you just needed a confidence boost and this is what this is telling you. That you need to stop being a hermit. Stop being distrustful. And just trust that everything you want, your emotional fulfillment, your financial fulfillment, your spiritual fulfillment will come to you if you just trust yourself. And I know it's easier said than done. I know. I, I've been there or am currently there. I'm not sure which one. Whenever this uh, video comes out. You're highly intuitive. And you could make a great living out of this. At the very least, you could attract the right people to learn you. Or <laughs> trust, attract the right people to help you learn to trust again. You're very valued. All right, for your guidance pile four. Maybe I grabbed the wrong piles, but that's okay. Oh yeah, you got a lot. After the rain, silver, silver lining, relief, hope, mercy. It's over. Acceptance. The grandmothers. <laughs> Remember your roots perspective. Trust the weavings. It's going to be hilarious if you are also a um, fiber artist like myself. I, I used to knit, or I knit, and I like weaving. It's, it's always come very easily to me to weave. Maybe you crochet, maybe you make rugs, like that's a thing now and I love it. Or macrame. Um, so, hello. Solar plexus. Oh yeah, you need to amplify this big time. And blue. So yeah, you need confidence with what you speak and what your psychic intuition is trying to say. I even had that feeling right before I started this reading. It's like, I don't know what to do. It was the only pile where I had to restart it a few times. So I understand that fully. But maybe wear a lot of blue. You need to open up that throat chakra. 
and have a lot more uh, confidence in what you're saying. You have to know that you are protected in what you say. And when you say something that needs to be heard, people are listening. Your words carry weight. And people trust your guidance. Because you're, they know that you know what you're talking about. You may be someone who's really quiet. And when you do speak up, people listen because it's like, oh, okay. She, she's not, they're not playing around. And... It may be this ability you have to do that naturally that gets you places. People may realize that you have, you give really good guidance, so they may put you in a position of power. So even if you don't make a living through something like tarot or um, intuitive guidance or personal coaching, this gift will carry you far in your field of expertise. It may carry you far in your job and your career. So even if you don't qualify for something, because we always see people who don't qualify for certain jobs be put in those roles. Sometimes because they're connect well connected or because somebody likes them or you know. But you will get there because you're trustworthy and you have good guidance and people just there's something about you that people know is good for the business. With grandmothers, you have a strong ancestral line. You you get a lot of guidance from your grandmothers, whether they're alive or past. Um, and even if they are alive now and they do come to pass, their guidance is still with you. Um, one of my grandmothers is not doing well right now, uh, health-wise. So we know she's close to passing within the next, you know, decade or so. But I feel her guidance regardless, even if I haven't seen her for a while. People's higher selves do come to you and they do speak with you. Um, this, this can also be for grandfathers, not just grandmothers, any grandparent. Um, but their guidance is always with, with you, even if you, even if for whatever reason you don't see yourself as intuitive or calling on higher powers. At the very least, just think of what your grandmother would tell you, and I promise you, um, that's the guidance you're seeking. With After the Rain, I have a feeling something happened here. Maybe it was that, whatever led to that distrust, you're going to blossom after that. Once you learn to trust again, once you learn to come out of hermit mode. you're going to suddenly feel this confidence and something, there's going to be a major shift happening. I want to pick out like a few more cards for you just because me telling you to be more confident in how you speak is it's easier said than done, but I want to see what else you can do. These cards are from the Ritual deck, by the way. I don't know if it's still, I don't think it's in print anymore. So, because it is not, and because I want you to have guidance, I'm going to pick out a few more cards. I shuffle off camera because I have such tiny hands and some of these cards just look awkward in my tiny hands. The only cards I can confidently shuffle are like mini, deck, mini tarot decks. All right, so for my pile four, what guidance can we have for you to better express your intuitive guidance? You got Seed of Life, Miracle, Oneness, Potential, Spirit, Akasha, Universe, Eternal Life, and Yarrow. Just making sure they're in frame. Um, if you do work with sacred geometry, um, this may be asking you to meditate with this. Or if you have like, you can draw this and put it in like a frame or a picture or a postcard or something in your room. 
or it may be needed at your altar if you're one of those people who has an altar. Um, I don't have an altar just because I'm messy enough as it is, but you could work with this. I'm just getting a lot of meditation. Um, I feel like the more you meditate on your confidence, the better you'll get at it. The more naturally it will come to you. And then for Yarrow, I feel like this is how you learn how to draw the right people to you, um, whether you burn it or drink it. I've never really worked with Yarrow. Um, So this is all I have for you, Pile 4. Um, thank you so much for letting me do a reading for you. And know that things will get better. Know that your intuition will only amplify and become more uh, strong. Your intuition will become stronger. And your confidence within it, along with it. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Take care.